Our concern must be for us. Cafe Vienna with the spicy. From Radio Shack, the TRS-80 Model 3. And at $200 off, it's a great value. When we were touring campus the other day, I got to see for the first time something that I'd heard a lot about but hadn't been able to actually, you know, touch and feel, and it's the Paul Gray Computer Museum. Paul Gray was the founding chair of the Programs in Information Science. The origin of the Paul Gray Personal Computing Museum was his desire to go back and find those devices and those technologies and share them with other people. When Paul Gray retired in 2001, he founded the museum based on his personal collection. He always really loved personal computers. He loved the personal connection with technology. There's a reason why we call them personal computers, because we have a personal relationship with them. We have one of the earliest personal computers, which is the Altair 8800, and that was kind of this weird machine where you would flip some switches and then lights would come on in a binary code and you could read that code. There was really nothing you could do with it. I mean, there's, there's no teletype hookup in the early days. There's no software for it. All you could do is use these switches and key things in into this front panel. It's pretty useless. People just bought it thinking that it would be neat to build a computer. We have one case that is dedicated to portability. So we have one of the first portable computers. We have one of the first clamshell computers. We have a kind of a tablet computer that only weighed four pounds. Back in the 80s, that was really remarkable, even though four pounds might seem like a lot today. It's amazing when you think about it that the phones that we carry around with us are typically more powerful than the most powerful computers from the late 1980s. Yeah, I like to buy this $1,200 computer. That'll be $5,300 complete. $5,300. But with monitor software, describe, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot to be done at this museum right now. We're working on the next exhibit, and once that's up, it'll give us some time to work behind the scenes. Things like conservation are really important right now. While we have an exhibit up that's new and fresh and people are excited about, we can work on making sure the objects in our storage are in a good condition. So some of these objects are from the 70s or early 80s, and rubber, plastic, glass, those things need to be conserved over time, especially rubber. I didn't know this until I started working on this computer museum, but rubber disintegrates and becomes very sticky, and any adhesive can really wreck plastic and do damage to the computer. So I use olive oil to remove some adhesive, and it worked a little bit. It was not perfect, but it's better than stripping something off with alcohol. The work that I've done here is part of my coursework, but I also get to do this work because of the generosity of donors. Besides Paul Gray's personal computers, he also had people donate computers to the museum, and we still get donations with technology, and that makes my work possible. The CGU Museum Studies program is a good mix of both theoretical knowledge and practical knowledge. Being able to touch the objects has been really great, and I've had other opportunities to do that in my CGU coursework, but to be able to run a museum and get really hands-on with it has been really great. The TRS-80 Model 3, on sale for $7.99, only at Radio Shack and Radio Shack Computer Centers, the computer experts.